Today, we will be taking a look at both combining a old school CSS trick, animating SVG paths, and combining it with something super modern, scroll driven animations. So last week, I came across this tweet by Wes Boss where he showed this really nice animation on Apple's website. And when I saw this, I thought, well, it's probably time to finally show all these people who have been asking me how you can animate SVG paths and combine that with the scroll driven animations. And that is exactly what we will be doing today. And the end result, I think speaks for itself. By using scroll driven animations, we will be recreating this scribble animation. And even if you keep on scrolling, we will also be using the scroll driven animations to fade in and fade out this text while the user keeps on scrolling. So let's dive in and recreate this ourselves. The starting point of this video already contains a few things. Also, you might see some Tailwind classes here and there, but that's mainly to help us throughout the demo. Everything that we will be coding will be in vanilla CSS. So the main thing we're going to focus on is this iPad section where you see that there is an SVG in there as well as a video and all of the different texts that you saw in the preview. So what it looks like right now is actually pretty boring. What you see is we have this scribble line, which is just a regular SVG pod. Then you see that we have a video which will play if I refresh. Yeah, that actually plays. And then at the end, you see that there's also the three different texts. So before we can start animating, we first need to overlay these elements on top of each other so we can use this SVG as a mask for the video to only show the video where the line is over top of it. So the way we do that is by going back and taking our iPad section class, which is the wrapper of both the SVG, the video, as well as the text. And then we go into our CSS and then we're gonna say iPad section and we're gonna make this display grid. Next, we take the SVG container and make this a grid area of 1.1, one, one, which I will explain to you in a second, because we're also going to take the video container and also make that grid area 1.1. One, one. And what grid area does here is we assign both of these elements to exactly the same column and row 1.1. One, one. So that means that these elements will now overlap each other. So if we go back, you indeed see that we have the video as well as the scribble line that are both overlaying each other. Well, first thing is that we need to make our SVG container have a higher Z index, so it's over top of the video. So we can say Z index of 10, and then you see that the line is already over top. But as you see, the video doesn't fill up the full screen yet. So we also need to take our video container and then style the video inside of that. We're gonna say width 100%, as well as object fit cover. So this way it simply covers the full width. And now we have this line overlaying our video. And what we can do is we can use this SVG to cut out our video. But before we do that, I want to make this line a little bit thicker. And making that line thicker, you can actually do that by changing the stroke width of your pot, which simply makes the element thicker. If we would go with 130 pixels, you already see that we have a really chunky line. And the way you then can use this SVG pot as a mask pretty much for your video is by going back and then we take our SVG container, which is a diff, and then we're gonna give that a background color of white. And then we can say mix blend mode lighten. And if you do that, you already see that the video is now cut out. And how this works is actually the following. If we would go in here and we would change our background color to black, then you see that we see everything. If we change it back to white, then you see that we only see the pot. And remember that pot had a black stroke. So if we would remove the SVG for a second, everything is white and you also see that we don't see a single thing. And that's not because the SVG container has a white background and that's overlaying, but it's because of the mixed blend mode lighten that simply now masks everything that's white, which is also everything. Again, if we would now change it back to black, you see that we would see everything. So by using the mixed blend mode, we can now overlay a black pot and then simply exclude everything that is white. And that already is our first step. The next step is to make that line actually animate while the user scrolls. So for that, I still wanna add a little bit more styles because what I wanna do is, for example, give this iPad section a height of 200 viewport height. This way, we do have some extra room to scroll, meaning that when Scribble is out of view, there's still room to appreciate the full video and also to scroll the text over top of it. However, as you see, we don't see any other portion of the video right now, and that is because our SVG container is stretched over the full height of our iPad section, which is simply the default behavior of CSS Grid. So we could say, align items start, and that will then move our SVG container up so it will not extend to the full height. And now, because only the SVG container has a wide background, anything that extends beyond it will always be visible. So again, if we would refresh, you see that everything just plays. 
if we also keep on scrolling, you see that we see a portion of the video, but we can't see everything anymore. So what we can do for that is we can go back to our video container. We can say this has a height of 100 dynamic viewport height, which is the height of the screen, minus on mobile the address bar, for example. And next, we also need to make sure that our video is also height 100%. And then you notice we can see the full video, but now there's also this white space where we don't see anything. One thing we should add for that is make our video container position sticky and also give it a top zero, meaning that it will stick to the top of the page for the 200th viewport height that the height of the parent is. And then you see that the scribbly line scrolls out of view. We can see the full video. And then if you keep on scrolling, it will move out of view again. And now we have that, we can simply animate these lines and then it scrolls out a few, and then we have some room to animate the text. So let's animate those lines. Animating an SVG pod is actually already being done for, well, quite a few years. And the way it works is as follows. If you go into your SVG, you see that we have this pod element, which is just the regular pod that you see being drawn. Now this pod element has a specific length, and the easiest way to get that length is by going into your console. If you select this pod element and you would go into the console, you have access to your currently selected element by using dollar sign zero. You see, we get our pod element, but then if we say dollar sign zero dot get total length, then you see that we get a value of 9,299. And this is the total length of the pod in pixels. And what we can do is we can animate this value. We need to go into our CSS and then we're going to say SVG container pod stroke dash array is the total length of our pod. And then there is another number that you can use and that is called stroke dash offset. If we, for example, would take the offset and just for now set it on 5000, which is about halfway, and we would go back and fix the typo here <laughs> and then go back. You see, we pretty much see half the length of the line. And if we would inspect this part, you also see that CSS is applied here and that we can also change this number. And then you see that if we make it larger, that pretty much the whole line gets erased. Meaning that if we would go to zero, then we see the full length of the line. So the stroke dash offset is the offset where the line starts drawing. And the way this works is because in the stroke dash of array, you can set a length in pixels that you want the line to be. If you would only specify one number, for example, 400, then it makes a line of 400 pixels, a gap of 400, and then a line again. So you kind of have a dashed stroke. And that's also where the name stroke dash array comes from. So if we set this stroke dash array to be the length of the total line, then all of a sudden we have a dash that is the length of the total line. And then by using the stroke dash offsets, we can set that to zero to have a full length or nine to nine nine. And then we need to have the decimal, but let's just make it 300 for now to just completely make it disappear. And this value we can animate. And that's what we're gonna do but we're gonna animate it with scroll-driven animations. First thing means that we need to set our scroll dash offset to zero. So that means that if we start scrolling, we don't want the line to be visible at all. So the current scroll dash offsets should actually be equal to the same value. And you could, if you want, just make this 9,300 if you don't like the decimal point, which is totally fine as well. And then what we need to do is based on the scroll, we want to animate it to the value zero, which means that the full line is visible. So first, we we will define a regular keyframe animation. We're gonna say add keyframes paint line, and then we're gonna say we wanna animate to stroke dash offset zero. And now the way we add this animation to our pod is the same as any other CSS animation. We go in and we define our animation, and then we're gonna say paint line, then we're gonna make it a linear animation because the easing isn't there. We will control it with our scroll in a minute. And then we're gonna say both. So it goes both forwards and backwards depending on the direction you're scrolling. One thing we do not specify though is a duration because this duration is now gonna be controlled with your scroll. And the way you can control animations nowadays with your scroll is by using animation timeline. If we add the property animation timeline, we can, for example, one of the values we could add and the one we're gonna use is called view. And this animation timeline property is actually pretty new and is not supported in all browsers yet but the support is actually changing pretty rapidly plus there is also a fallback that just makes sure that the animation doesn't run but the elements are simply visible so before we continue any further let's see what the result already is if we start at the top of the page and we start scrolling you already see that the line is being drawn while we keep on scrolling so we almost have the animation already 
And that's again simply by using the animation timeline view. And the view portion here says that the timeline or the total length of the animation should be divided over the time that the element is in view. And that's also what you see. It starts once the first portion is in view and it completes when the element is fully out of view. But that's of course not what we want because now we see this part of the image which is always visible because our SVG only had a specific height. But we can change that. We can add a animation range and then we can specify, for example, entry 25% and entry 80%, where the first value tells us when the animation should start and the second when it should end. In this case, it should start when 25% of the element is in view and then it should end when 80% of the element is coming into view. So if we check that again, then you see the animation, of course, plays a bit quicker, but it also ends a lot quicker. So now it's up to us to tweak that value to, for example, make it 60%. So it actually finishes right before we start to see the rest of the video. And all of a sudden we have recreated this animation by using a few of these modern CSS properties. So now we know how we can animate this based on scroll. We can also use this to animate the texts. If we look back at our code, we see that I've already wrapped all of the paragraphs inside of a div called text container. And in there we have all of our three paragraphs. So the first thing we need to do is we need to overlap this text on top of our video as well. So we're gonna do that pretty similar to what we did with our SVG container and video container, meaning that we're gonna say text container is print area 11. This time, I'm also gonna say it has a margin top of 100 dynamic viewport height. This way, it has a gap of the height of the screen before it starts to become visible giving us some time to also scroll the scribble. And also it needs to be on top of the video. So we also need to add a Z index of 10. And if we would then go back, you already see that the text is there. Let me also add a little bit of styling. So we make it white, have the text be a bit larger as well as in the center. And then you already see that we have the text there. Also, let's add a little bit of gap in there by giving the text the margin bottom. So again, we have some gap, but now we still need to add this fade to it as well. And you guessed it. We can again use scroll driven animations here. So what we want to happen is by default, our text should be opacity zero. We're gonna add that already. And then we want the text to fade in when it comes in from the bottom and fade out when it goes back to the top. So that means that if we have our scroll animation, we pretty much are saying that when it's halfway of that animation, because the scroll could be the full duration from bottom to top, when it's halfway, we want it to be opacity one. So let's just create a new keyframes and then we're gonna say fade in. And then we can say 50%, we want this to be opacity one. And and then again, we can add the animation property here where we say fade in, both linear. And then we are using the animation timeline, set that to view as well. And then we also have to add the animation range. In this case, I'm gonna add entry 10% and then cover 90%, meaning that if the element is 10% into view, then we start to fade it in. And cover says that if it's cover 90% of the distance going up, then it starts to fade out again. So that way we kind of have a track that goes from 10% at the bottom to 90% at the top and halfway of that position, the element is fully faded in. So if we did this and we go back, we should already see that our element now fades in. And then you see if you scroll, the text fades in and you keep on scrolling, it fades out again. And to me, these scroll driven animations are such a breeze to add and so much easier to use than any JavaScript animation library out there. I absolutely cannot wait until this is the default that we can use. But until then, we just need to add a little bit of fallback and maybe decide to not have animations in older browsers or we need to use something like Framer Motion, which is also, of course, a super good library that I even created a complete course around. Check out the link below if you want to know more about that. But what we are going to do now is we're going to make sure that if you would, for example, open this in Safari, that it would still look OK, although there is no animation. Because if we would open it in Safari right now, you will see that the text is not visible. And that is because the opacity zero gets applied, but the animation doesn't run, so it will never get the opacity one. Luckily, we nowadays have the add supports rule where we can test if the browser supports the animation timeline property. So in there, we can say animation timeline view and then instead of adding the styles outside of this, we're actually gonna copy that in and then we're gonna remove it here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing with our pod animation, including the stroke dash offset. Because if we want it to be fully visible, we should make it a stroke dash offset of zero by default, because that is also what we're animating towards. And then we copy in these styles and we're gonna add that to our add support stack. 
So this way, the animations are only applied if the browser supports it. And also, even more important, we're only setting these defaults that hide, for example, the text or the path only if the browser supports it. So if we now would go back to Safari, you see that the text is already there. There's just no fade in animation. And the same thing goes for the scribble line. And honestly, I think that's a pretty good fallback. On top of that, hopefully it won't take long anymore before these automatically start working in other browsers because they then also pass the ad supports rule. And then all of a sudden your animations start to work. If we would go back to Chrome, you see that the animation still runs like you expect it to be. Finally, you will also notice that if you go towards a different resolution, that the animation will run quicker or slower depending on the ratio that the image has. You could also go in here and change any of these values and experiment with, for example, cover or maybe even a hard-coded pixel value like 700 pixels to see what the result is on the animation and tweak it to your liking. And maybe even use something like container queries to, depending on the height, change the animation. I don't know about you, but I am super happy with this new direction CSS is heading into. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.